Now comes a concept. How about a metal reacting with a non-metal? How about a metal reacting with a non-metal? Can you expect a metal reacting with a non-metal? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. So what? How how do they react? How does one a, a metal react with a non-metal? Um, through the transfer of electrons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So whenever a metal reacts with a non-metal, the compound that you get is called as a ionic compound. So you will get ionic compound whenever metal reacts with a non-metal. You will get a type of compound called ionic compound. So here in the next aspect in the next part we are understanding the formation of ionic compound this is important so formation of ionic compound and also the properties of ionic compound properties of ionic compound okay so these are the things uh, we have to discuss in the next part right okay so they'll ask you in the exam explain the formation of nacl explain the formation of sodium oxide explain the formation of mgo calcium chloride so all these are examples of ionic compound here yeah. okay so all these are examples of ionic compound and many students will ask me ma'am how do we know that one is ionic compound or not so say if somebody ask me ma'am uh can i say uh like uh, what what do you say uh, can i say bcl3 uh, okay so this is a compound boron trichloride is this ionic compound or covalent compound um, ionic compound ionic compound how do you say how do you say whether it is ionic compound or covalent boron compound boron is from uh, group 1 to 13 right second group ma'am okay chlorine is a non metal so what uh, chlorine is non metal boron I'm always metal, first huh? one will be like first and second group and the second one will be 16th and 17th group right now. very good rithvik has watched my video so nicely right i have told okay. this in a video yes that's why i i told you to watch the videos right see guys always remember metal if the metal is from group 1 and group 2 if the non metal is from group uh, 15 group 16 okay group 17 okay then that combination forget about group 15 also leave leave group 15 okay so, yeah if the metal is from group 1 and 2 if the non metal is from group 16 and group 17 then the compound formed is always ionic always ionic if other than this any combination you have observed then the compound is covalent covalent compound formation and all you will observe in carbon compounds chapter now i am not telling that okay so now you answer bcl3 ionic or covalent b boron this is a metal always first placed element will be a metal second come element is always a non metal okay in most of the compound yeah so boron metal is it coming under group 1 and 2 yes or no yes sir hey boron is coming in group 1 and 2 boron which group does it come non metal it was yeah boron comes in 13th group yaar yeah. right so boron does not come in group 1 and 2 chlorine is coming in group 17 but boron is not coming in group 1 and 2 so this is an this is not ionic compound what is the condition i told metal should be belonging to group 1 group 1 which elements will come your sodium potassium rubidium cesium group 2 which elements will come magnesium calcium strontium and barium that's it these are group 1 elements and these are group 2 elements so if this elements are combining with 16th group 16th group which elements will come oxygen sulfur don't want all elements only two elements i am mentioning 17th group which elements will come fluorine chlorine bromine and etc okay these combinations 
are only called as ionic compound okay so now i'll give you some examples ccl4 tell me whether it is a ionic compound or not ma'am it is a ionic compound how ma'am no no ma'am no ma'am no right no ma'am see carbon what is this c means what carbon no, carbon is coming in which group 14 group, group. cl is coming in uh, 17th group non metal second one mm -hmm. is non metal first one is always a metal first written symbol is a metal second written symbol is always a non metal remember so the metal is not coming under group 1 and 2 so that means here only you can cancel it off it is a not ionic compound what about calcium oxide non aspar is it a ionic compound or covalent how ionic compound um because the calcium comes from second group and oxygen yeah calcium is a metal coming in a second group oxygen is a non metal coming in a 16th group yes our condition is satisfied no what is the trick i told metal if it is under group 1 and 2 non metal if it is under group 17 and 16 such a combination always is called as ionic compound okay so this is how one can identify whether something is a ionic compound or not kcl ionic compound or not um ionic compound why ionic compound um potassium comes from first group yeah potassium coming in a first group cl yeah, is a non metal coming in a 17th group so this combination is ionic one only okay so this is how you have to decide so very 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 important understood everybody if everyone is clear with this concept say clear in the chat section type clear in the chat section okay super 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 okay fine so now their formations are important here i am not explaining their formations okay i have explained it in a very detailed way in the video so uh, always formations have to be learned in three steps okay so formations have to be learned in three steps step number 1 is uh, uh, you know metal loses electron here metal always loses electron this is the symbol for electron non metal the one which is a non metal always gains electron gains electron and later uh, dot structure format you have to show right dot structure for the formation that means if you take up a sodium so what is the dot structure of sodium sodium has got one valence electron that valence electron you will show in the form of dot right uh, cl how many valence electrons seven one two three four five six seven so you have to show this sodium is a metal it is giving no so this electron is moving on to non metal so what what is formed once sodium has given its electron after losing it will gain plus sign cl has gained electron no after gaining it will gain minus sign so this compound is called as nacl actually in nacl metal will exist as a cation non metal will be present as anion okay so while writing formula we don't mention plus and minus but na is always present as cation na is always present as na plus cl here is always present as cl minus while writing formula we don't indicate charge but actually speaking they are present as cation and anion similarly can you tell me what are the ions present in calcium oxide calcium is present as cation what charge you have on calcium plus yeah plus 1 or plus 2 or plus 3 plus plus 2 plus 2 Plus two. Calcium is present as Ca plus two. Oxygen is present as O minus two. Minus two. Yeah, O minus two, like this. So they'll ask you. They'll give a compound and they'll ask you what ions are present. Say for example, say for example, one question I will put for you. There is an element X, okay, which has got atomic number nineteen. There is an element Y. which has got uh, atomic number 
okay so both of them will combine to form ionic compound so both of them will combine to form ionic compound what ions are present in that compound what ions are present okay so you have to give the formula of this ionic compound and you should also tell me what are the ions present in that compound so this kind of questions are very very famous for any board exam okay who are following ncert syllabus so can you tell me the answer who will tell me the answer ionic compound should we need to do the dot structure Mom, potassium no, if the question is like this, you no need to do the three-step dot structure. Just tell what is X. What is X here? Mom, potassium. Ah, X is potassium. Potassium because it has got the atomic number nineteen. Ah, you tell me what is Y here? Chlorine. Chlorine. Yeah, atomic number seventeen. If this and this combines, tell me what is the formula you will get? Mom, KCl. KCl. KCl is the formula. What ions are present in KCl? Um, uh, K plus one. K plus one. C minus. One. Yeah, K plus one C and Cl minus one. That's it. Okay. So this is the cation present and this is the anion present. Say if you don't know to tell answer like that only, you can uh, you can use the three step uh, method, uh, do the dot structure and then show. That is also fine. But if you can directly uh, write the answer, you can write it this way. No problem. Okay, so this kind of questions are very very common, guys. So instead of asking formation, they would ask something like this: some X atomic number they'll give, Y atomic number they'll give, what compound is formed, what type of compound it is. You know, these are certain questions they'll ask you. Okay, so one more question of this sort. Okay, one more question. Uh, there is a compound X with atomic number eleven. Compound Y with atomic number sixteen. Uh, both of them will combine to form a compound Z. So this is a compound Z. Okay. So they they have mentioned this as a metal, and they will also mention this Y is a non-metal. So this metal is combining with this non-metal to give a compound Z. So my question is, what is the nature? What is the nature of Z? And write the formula. And write, write the formula of Z. Yes. Try the answer. Mom, it is um, neutral in nature, right? Ah? Huh? It's neutral in nature. Neutral. Nature in the sense, uh, is it a? Uh, I mean. Here, okay. Did I ask any? Um, okay. Formula N N A two. Yes. What is what kind of compound? Is it ionic or covalent? That's okay. what I mean by nature here. Yes, no, yes, no. It's a ionic compound. Yeah, it's an ionic compound. That is confirmed. Now formula. Um, N A N A two. Yes. What is the formula? Um, N A two. Yes. N A two. S. Is this correct? Can you agree with that? Mom, no, mom. You can't agree with her. Then what is the formula? Mom, you need to like. Uh... Mom, any plus two should come right now. Any plus two. Any plus two. What any plus two? Yeah, any plus two. Why does it come? See, formula is any is correct. Okay. See, okay. sodium uh, atomic number eleven means sodium. Atomic number sixteen means it is sulfur. Okay, so when sodium, okay, sodium loses electron. Okay, let us work with the dot structure. Sodium has got one valence electron. Two sodiums are there, isn't it? N A two. That means another sodium. I will write down another sodium. I will write down with its valence electron. One sulfur. What is the valence electrons of sulfur? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One sodium is giving one electron. Another sodium is giving another electron. So what do you get? What do you get? You have an A. Each sodium has lost one electron only. So what is the valency? What it is plus one only. But how many sodiums are there? Two are there. That is how you have to take. 
you can't okay. say na plus 2 okay ritwik yes ma'am yes ma'am got it, it is na plus each sodium has lost one only it has okay. not lost two no so na plus one only but how many are there two are there two are there okay now what is the valency of sulfur what is the charge on sulfur i should write it has got two electrons two electrons minus 2 minus 2 yeah sulfur anion is s minus 2 cation is na plus 1 only is that clear everyone cation yes. is na plus 1 but anion is s minus 2 it has got two electrons from two individual sodiums but sodium as a individual lost one only so when you talk about each sodium its charge is plus 1 only Okay, is the doubt clear, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 